You probably already thought of like a concise way to say this. No, I haven't thought of it at all. Oh, really? No, I'm kidding. Yes, I've played it through my mind. Uh, no, so my story really starts about the end of 2019. At this point in my life, I'd done just about everything I could to try to throw away my marriage. I was spiraling out of control like a total train wreck. Alcohol was always a big part of my story. And towards the end of 2019, I started to really start to feel depression. It was like this double-edged sword because the alcohol use drove my depression, and then the depression drove my alcohol use, so I was literally just spiraling. What made it really hard for me was, on one hand, I'm a state trooper, I'm a football coach, and there's a lot of people who are looking at me like, man, this guy's got it together. Like, the public's eye, I'm one thing, but when I look in the mirror, like, I cannot stand this guy looking back at me hated everything about me, and nobody knew it. The depression and the alcohol use just continued to get worse. I was done. Not only was I done with marriage, but I was done with life. I was so far gone at one point, I remember telling my mom, like, I don't know if God's even real. That's how far away I was. There's no one really to talk to you in a cruiser, you know? I worked midnight shift. I'd been on midnight shift for 10 years, nine years to this point, but I knew deep down I, something had to change. I knew what the end result was going to be if something didn't happen. I turned 21 on a bar stool. And I felt like that 10 years, like that's all I knew. I didn't know if I believed at this point. So I guess this is kind of where I first cried out, you know, alone in my cruiser. You can't go back now and change the beginning, but if you start now, you can change your ending. But then the, the doubt, the fear, the shame, the guilt, because I knew who I was up until this point, like there's no way. And that was the feeling that I had was that you can't be used. You're too far gone. But then it hits me, it's like, no, you're exactly what Jesus wants. He's not looking for perfect people. They don't exist. He's looking for broken people. But where do I start? I don't even know where to begin. Throughout the 10 years that I said I wasted, there were times where I would go to church. I downloaded the YouVersion Bible app. I didn't have it on my phone. I don't know if YouVersion typically sends out emails, but literally when I said, okay, but where do I begin? I get an email from the YouVersion Bible app. It said, start your 21 day revival now. And it was like too perfect not to be from God. So I downloaded the YouVersion Bible app. Things got better, um, but I always, I still held on to the alcohol. Things got better at home, but that still had a hold of me. I started to spiral again. I got pulled from the promotion list at work. Everything kind of came to a head for me with the alcohol and with everything that was going on. The very first verse when I started that 21 day was Romans 8.1. It was, therefore, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And it was like, at that point, uh, you know, I felt like everything kind of fell off and that I was going to be okay. But then obviously, COVID shuts everything down. There's nowhere to go. Probably the end of June, um, everything came to a head again. Truly, it was rock bottom. I woke up the next morning and Chelsea was gone. I think what hurt the most was she came back to get a few things and before she left, I remember she gave me a hug and she said, I don't want to do this, but I have no, I have no other choice. And then she was gone. The walls don't talk, the dogs don't talk. I needed help. And so we had decided after the four days that we were gonna go do marriage counseling. And how it works is I went first, she was supposed to go second. I go first, I spill my story to this lady. An hour, I unpack everything. And at the very end, she looks at me and she goes, I can't help you. And it crushed me because I realized I needed her to help me because this is marriage counseling and I need my marriage back. I need my wife back. I need my kids back. And she said, I can't help you. You need to go to an addiction counselor. So again, for an hour, I sit down with this guy and I look at him and I say, listen, am I the worst person you've ever talked to? And he literally laughed at me. And he said, no, you're gonna be just fine. Chelsea was the first person to show me the love of Jesus that Jeff, the guy I sat down with, I would say he showed me the hope because I'm sitting there and I feel like I'm this big when I'm done talking to him and I walk out of the room and I'm like, okay. I had severe depression and I had uh, the high mania, so manic depressive bipolar disorder, I don't know. I went and got medicated and I quit drinking and that was huge for me. So when I was going through, I guess the darkest times and the struggle, I wanted to be alone. I would go and sit in a room by myself and just listen to music and I didn't care what anybody else was doing. Kids were in there playing with Chelsea and doing all their things. I didn't, I wasn't involved, I wasn't present. Mentally I wasn't present, physically I wasn't present. 
now that I've taken these steps, and I say I, we, because um, Chelsea's been my backbone through the whole thing, I guess just being present now, I'm involved. That hurts a little bit when I think about it because I don't remember much of Colton growing up. I feel like from four to eight, so from when he was from four to eight, those important years, like, I don't remember a lot of those. And I have three beautiful children, Colton, Kobe, Kinsley, and I know now I'm going to be present. I'll never have to miss those things. 2021 rolls around, new campus here opens up. I played music my whole life. I'm in a better place now, and I, I wanted to, I hadn't really played out. I used to use my music to play at bars and drink for free, but I wanted to use it for good. So one Sunday, it might've been the first Sunday after we opened here at Coshocton, I reached out to Sam. He invited me to come. I, I think it was April of 21 was when I first started. I ended up getting baptized in the river. It was awesome. And I shared my story about the dark path I was going down. And I didn't know where my dad was with his faith. And when I started playing music in the band, because when I played out, you know, dad was always there. When I started playing in the band, dad started showing up. Dad started coming to church. I get baptized in July. And Chad said, somebody here is getting their heartstrings pulled on. If that's you, come forward and we'll baptize you right now. And my dad took off, took his wallet out of his pocket. I got to baptize my dad in the river on the same day I got baptized. And that was so cool. For me, worship, to some people, they're just words. But, with, but now there's a story behind those words. You know, I feel like I'm closer to God. And then through me, hopefully, it's pulling people, especially the ones that know the story. Now everybody's going to know the story. <laughs> I went from playing music in a bar to playing on Sundays. The very first song I sang here was Battle Belongs. And that was the day I got baptized. I sang Battle Belongs and we had a meeting afterwards and we just talked about the, the warfare around us and just not not to, you know, scare anybody, but obviously, you know, there is a battle. And we've read the book, we know who wins. But I had these made uh, say battle ready. Um, so I always keep it on. Uh, but I feel like that's what we're doing out there when we go to worship is we're going to battle, not just for us, but for those around us. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. down the ramp, out to my car. I just remember thinking, this is it, this is life. I don't know how he looked at me before, but I know how he's gonna look at me now and going forward. You know, early on, I felt like I was so far gone that I couldn't be saved. I think so often we forget there's a story in the Bible about the thief on the cross who lived his entire life and with his dying breath gave his life to Jesus. So you're never too far gone. Who you were, who you've been, it doesn't define who you can be when you, when you give your life to Jesus and everything around you gets better. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I sing through 